Hey guys, today on the Forging Freedom channel, we're going to talk about succession planning. Succession planning is an awesome method that helps you get the absolute maximum use out of your garden all season long. So let's get to it. Freedom Forgers, it's Patriot Gal. Just thought I'd show you what I'm up to today, doing a little succession planting. So if you'll remember, um, earlier in the spring, I did a garlic video where I showed you that I was going to plant the garlic and then I was going to plant carrots in every other row with the purpose of the garlic coming up in the spring, shading the carrot seeds so that they have an opportunity to get going and that has worked beautifully you can see right here this is a row of carrots this is a row of carrots that's a row of carrots and that's a row of carrots and my garlic was planted in between so it was planted here 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 and here and what i've done since then is i've harvested the garlic uh, the carrots are now able to be on their own they're doing well they've been thinned out i try to only plant uh, a couple of seeds per depression that I make in the soil so I don't have to thin the carrots heavily. Um, but now I'm doing succession planting. I'm doing that with beets. Today is I think around July 17th or 18th, right around there. So it's midsummer for us, pretty close to midsummer. And uh, I think our first, uh, our average first frost date is sometime in the second week of September. So what I've done here is I've planted golden beets in each of these rows. And so these I planted a couple weeks ago because I wanted to show you guys how that looks. You can see the beets coming up. They'll need to be thinned when they get a little larger. But this is how I started the beets. I started them the same way I do carrots. I make little depressions, spacing them um, a couple of inch of a, inches apart. Then I cover them with dirt. I just make a little depression, not very deep, about the same depth, maybe twice the depth of the seed. And then I just spray, just brush dirt over them. But before I water them in, I put a single layer of burlap. And these are actually single layers, but because of the width of the row, I've had to fold them in half. Lay that across there and water through that. That does two things. That displaces the water so that it doesn't wash my seeds away. And then the other thing that it does is it keeps it very moist so that the wind and the sun do not dry out the crust of the earth before my beets have a chance to germinate. And it'll take about five days for them to germinate. Once they've germinated, I'll take the burlap off, water them well, and then I may put uh, the burlap, just brace it up with something and put the burlap over top of it uh, as a shade cloth but not right on the ground. I'll probably use this grid right here that I use for everything else. You could use a cattle piece of a cattle panel that would work just great. But just something to keep the sun off of the beets where they get a little more established and then I'll, you know after a week or so I'll probably just pull that right off. That allows enough sunlight to get in there that the root can, the tap root can get deep enough that it doesn't matter if that crust of dirt dries out or not. So that's what I'm doing. And let me just show you the garlic that I harvested. I harvested it about a week ago. And I've got it over here under the fruit trees on a rack drying. And if you ask me where I got this rack, well, we have a few rental properties and uh, this was left by one of my tenants so I decided to put it by, to use but my garlic's been here about a week it's cherry uh, it's in the shade but it gets plenty of air and uh, in a future video I will show you this is a hard neck garlic I don't remember the variety right off the top of my head this is another hard neck garlic down here a different variety um, but why what I will do is I will show you in a future video how I trim the garlic and how I string it up for storage so stay tuned for that and if you guys like what you see feel free to subscribe we love new subscribers and we love you to share our videos as well 
Also, guys, if you'd like to continue seeing videos like this, please support us by going through our Amazon link. You can find that at the in the show notes of every video that we do. If you buy your normal things through that uh, link that we have, then we get a small commission on everything that you buy, and that helps us support the channel. It doesn't cost you a dime extra. It's stuff that I want you to buy anyway. I don't want you to buy anything special to support us. But that really does help. Anyway, glad you could join us today. Remember to do something today to go out and forge your freedom. And we'll see you next time. Bye now. One thing I wanted to mention to you guys that I think is really important is that th these beets that I've been growing this year, some I planted this spring, and there's a video of that, I believe. And uh, these ones that I'm growing here, these are all from seed that I saved. And if you want to see how you can grow your own beet seed, I'll look up above and there'll be a card to show you where to look for that video. But it's just really a satisfying feeling to know that you grow the seed yourself. And do I do it because seeds are so expensive or so because I save such a great amount of money? No, I don't. I do it for two reasons. One, the seeds are regionally adapted to my area. So every time I say save seeds for my best and most beautiful crop, I get seeds that work well in my area. The other reason is just for sheer self-sufficiency. The day may come when you're not able to buy the seed that you want readily. It may be a quality of seed that you don't want to grow. It may be a genetically modified seed that has to have something added to it to grow properly or that the seed can't be saved and it won't reproduce itself. If you don't think that can happen, it's already happening. And so that is why I save my own seed, to, to have the skill and to have the resources here at the homestead. It does more to forge our freedom and to create personal liberty in our lives. So anyway, you guys, I sure appreciate you stopping by and we'll see you next time.